Inside EKU Sports. Brought to you by Jimmy John's. Order Jimmy John's sandwich delivery today. Jimmy John's, freaky fast, freaky fresh. Welcome to Inside EKU Sports, a production of EKU Athletics. Greg Stottlemyre along with the head football coach, Mark Elder. Mark, the number two team in the nation, Jacksonville State, was in Richmond last Saturday. No offensive touchdowns defensively, though. That's how they beat you. It was a real competitive game and a great one before a big crowd on homecoming. Yeah, our defense came out and played lights out. They, they had a tremendous game, one of the best defensive performances I've seen. Uh, Jacksonville State's very, very talented. I mean, they've got... Uh, one of the best quarterbacks in the country, if not the best at this level. Uh, really good running back. Uh, their offensive line is very athletic and physical. A couple receivers. And, and our, our coaches put together a, a great game plan. Our players went out and executed it really well. Played assignment football. Tackled really well, uh, was able to really contain those guys. And that was great to see. Eh? We didn't give up a touchdown on the day defensively. It was great to see our defense come out and, and perform at a high, high level. Uh, obviously, we didn't, didn't quite get it done on the offensive side of the ball, and that hurt us quite a bit. Uh, special teams was about a draw. I think we, we kind of gained a little bit of an edge, but, but really we just got to get some things corrected offensively and decision-making and, and things along those lines because that was the Achilles heel uh, for the game. Let's talk a little bit more about the defense. Eli Jenkins was the leading rushing quarterback in the nation in FCS, coming in at 101 and a half yards a game. You held him to 25. The previous three years he had never been sacked, never been intercepted. You sack him twice and intercept him once. Yeah, our game plan centered around him. I mean, you look at their offense and, and it all goes through his hands. And, and it is that way with quarterbacks a lot of times. But I'm talking the run game does, the pass game, all of those things. They're all centered around him. And uh, we had a very specific game plan as far as we, we wanted to put pressure on him, uh, both in the run game and in the passing game, and, and make it difficult for him. Uh, not allow him to be able to make the proper reads, force his, his timing uh, to speed up in those reads, force his timing to speed up in the, in the pass reads and the run reads. And, and that was very beneficial for us and it, it certainly helped us and and we bent a couple times you know we, we said we're going to go one-on-one -on, -one on the perimeter at times and and they completed a couple of those balls but we tackled the guys and and you have a 18 yard game but you get them on the ground uh, and then you force them to go get another first down eventually uh, we were able to get stops and so we gave up a couple yards here and there but but we got stops before we we gave up a touchdown and, and it was great to see the guys compete it was great to see the guys play assignment football and, and play physical Not Nigel Bethel, I thought, did a good job with Josh Bards. That was a fun one-on-one -on -one matchup at times. And then Kobe Grace had a great game with 13 tackles. Absolutely. Uh, I think our whole secondary played really well in, in numerous regards. First of all, we, we talked in the team meeting, said, hey, we're going to put you guys one-on-one. -on -one. You're going to have no help. And we got to win. We, we want to go out there and compete with these guys. We're going to put you alone, and you got to win. And you look at what was done, uh, again, there was a couple passes. Sure, there was some, an 18, a 15. But those guys went out. They got isolated, and they were able to still win a uh, majority of those matchups. I thought Nigel did really well. Tucker had a great game, had a, a beautiful pick that was just uh, perfect as far as execution, great eyes, great execution. Kobe Grace was physical all day long. Uh, did a really good job in the run game, was physical, showed up, was a, was a presence. So very proud of, of our whole defense and, and how that secondary played. That was the key. Devin Borders had his 13th kick block, his eighth field goal, now second all-time in both categories in FCS football history. Yeah, that was great to see uh, as far as that's a weapon that we've had. Uh, obviously, he's a weapon in that category throughout his whole career, and that's something that we've had, and we've been close a couple times. And it was great to see him go out there and get the block on that one. That was a great momentum play for us and, and gave us some good field position. So it was neat to see Devin go get that. Hopefully, we can continue to get the, the right angle and a little bit of luck that it, that it happens to come across his hands. It's obvious everybody knows it. You know it better than anybody, but in the last two games, 28 points off interceptions. And that's yeah. what you've just got to button up in some way. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, we can't, 
You don't want to throw interceptions, period, uh, on some 50-50 balls out there on the perimeter. That's our offense. I mean, we've got some big, good wide receivers that are going to run down the sideline. We're going to put the ball up in the air. And, and occasionally, and that's, that's the point of it being 50-50, you know. Occasionally, it's going to be incomplete, and occasionally, it's going to be an interception. And I can live with those, and we can live with those because those are interceptions. The guy falls down. It's usually almost like a, a bad punt because you're going to give up 30 yards of field position. We can live with those. Uh, uh, the ones where we're making bad decisions, where guys are stepping in front or you're, you're forcing throws or cloudy reads, those things got to get corrected. We can't have those because not only do those lead to a, a turnover, but when a guy's stepping in front, it leads to what's happened to us the last couple of weeks as far as giving up not only the interception, but the return, a uh, big return for either field position or points. And that's happened too many times. Uh, we've got to make better decisions. And, and how we played early in that game as far as we had some three and outs, but at the end of the day, the reads weren't there. We threw the ball out of bounds, and we punted, and it was a back-and-forth ball game. That's fine. If our defense is playing well, we don't need much more than that. We'll, we'll get a drive or two together. We'll make a big play here or there and, and be able to execute and win games. We just can't do those mistakes that cost us huge. Up next for Eastern Kentucky is Tennessee Martin on the road, a 3 o'clock kick Saturday Eastern time. They're 4-4 four and four deceiving because they have played three FBS teams, and their loss, their other loss, was uh, uh, right at the end against uh, Tennessee State. Sure, they're three and a one in the conference. They've played three FBS schools, as you just said, which is uh, very difficult to do, but I'll say this, they were very competitive, particularly in the first two. Uh, I, I had the chance to watch the Cincinnati game on, on TV or it was on ESPN3 on my computer while we were making recruiting calls that night. It was a Thursday night game, I think, and it went down to the wire. I mean, it was a ball game late in the fourth quarter, a one-score game. Uh, then the next week against Hawaii, they went out and it was – a five-point game or something right. like that out at Hawaii. I mean, you talk about a, a difficult deal. You're traveling hours upon hours in a flight, and they went out and, and played really well against Hawaii. And then obviously they're three and one in the conference. They've they've played in a lot of close games, and they've found ways to win a majority of those. Uh, so they're a very very good team, and and we've got to bring our A game this weekend. What's the one thing they'll challenge you the most? Offense, defense, special teams. What's your biggest concern area? Uh, I wouldn't say that it's any phase of the game. Uh, I will say something that stands out about them is they are big and they are physical. I mean, when you look at them in, in every category, it doesn't matter if you're talking offense, defense, or special teams, they're big and they're physical. You talk about their offensive line, they're huge. Their receivers are 6'2 to 6'4. They're big people on offense. On defense, they have three, they play a 3'3'5 three, three, personnel group, and all three of those guys up front are 300 pounders and they're athletic. So this is a big physical football team on special teams. They're physical, they're tough, they're well coached. Um, we're going to have to be ready for a uh, knock them out, drag them out, 12 round fight this weekend. All right, good luck against Tennessee, Martin. Thank you, Scott. So that is Mark Elder. We're going to roll the clock back. One of the new inductees into the EKU Hall of Fame was on Roy Kidd's first football team. My chat with him when Inside EKU Sports continues. In a world where one hungry boss... There better be food up there or you're all fired. ...could cost an entire office their jobs. Who ordered the food? And time is running out. Someone has to take the fall. No orders on Tuesday. Today isn't Tuesday. It's not Tuesday. We're all fired. Fire, fire. Oh. It'll take one intern and his trusted mobile app to save the day. Freaky fast. At a Jimmy, <clears throat> at a Jimmy John's near you. Every day is a concept that few people can commit to. Every day requires a level of dedication that forces you to test your limits. Every day I'll give back to the community because I draw strength from their support. Every day the sounds of your cheers will echo through my mind. Knowing that you have my back means I can always look forward. Every day I'll be too tired to sweat and my bones will ache. Every day will provide me with the slight edge that I need to succeed. Champions are built every day. Chuck Seaman wore number 88 when he was a defensive end in the mid-60s playing football for EKU. He goes into the 2016 class of the EKU Athletics Hall of Fame. Congratulations, Chuck. Thank you. And what do you remember the most about your days at EKU? First of all, it's quite an honor to go into the Hall of Fame. 
I never would have dreamed as a young freshman that that would have been possible because I came actually on a partial scholarship, had to work my way up to a full scholarship. And it was at, at Coach Kidd's first year as head coach. And little did I know that he'd go on to be one of the greatest coaches, uh, college coaches of all time. He was an incredible coach. He was a motivator. Um, he taught us how to how to how to give when there wasn't anything left to give. He taught us how to how to take the feet and build from there. And probably the most the most the enduring thing that as a freshman was just just scared to death and given everything you had, every play, every down, every practice, and um, that was that was probably it. Just the the all of it all to come from a small town and small school in high school and just put shoved into the limelight. You know, I've been around a lot of the guys from the 1967 team when you won the Grantland Rice yes. Bowl, the, uh, the regional championship. And there's a bond that still exists Absolutely. almost yes. 50 years later now. Mm -hmm. uh, you remember that day? Because you told me you had, a, you had broken your leg earlier in the season. You I were did. bound and determined to play. I did. I broke my leg against uh, Western Kentucky in our homecoming game. And uh, tried to keep playing, but it was a small bone and it, 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 it just couldn't do it. So they, I, I was determined to play in the, in the bowl game. So they took my cast off, which they told me not to, and I played in it. And I re just remember the, the all of the game that Eastern played one heck of a game, the entire game, and we pulled it out. We won, and uh, I, I was presented the game ball um, because, I, first of all, I was a co-captain. Second of all, I played with that injury, so uh, it, was, it was quite a monumental time, yes. And it is a, a, a lot of closeness with that group of men. You have been in the Arabian horse business all your life. Yes. Uh, how did football help you in your endeavors as a businessman? Absolutely. Never say never, never quit, Preserve, just drive forward. Uh, when things maybe are difficult, you just keep on plugging on in uh, the, the game, sports in general. And, um, will do that in teamwork and depend on your on your teammates um, it just set a basis a, 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 for 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 me as a self-employed person um, it, it helped me immensely Chuck congratulations welcome thank to you. the hall thank you very much all right Chuck Seaman he is now in the EKU Athletics Hall of Fame Still ahead on Inside EKU Sports, we talk to Avery Pitt, a student athlete getting national recognition for his success on the field and in the classroom. I now pronounce you man and wife. You may kiss the bride. Not the food. I got you, sis. Freaky fast. Let's get pregnant. Jimmy Jones. <laughs> Ten seconds to go. Hyper <laughs> coming forward. <laughs> Moves in top of the key. Six seconds to go to three. V. Campbell Trophy signifies the best football scholar athlete in the nation. And one of the semifinalists this year is with us now on Inside EKU Sports. Avery Pitt, a Colonel, wears number 97. Congratulations, first of all, on the honor, as we'll find out who the 12 finalists are on November 1st. Well, thank you, thank you. Did you know this was potentially going to happen? Yeah, uh, me and Kevin, we, we met over summer and, and filled out the application. And at that point, it was just an application process and didn't really know where it was going to go from there. But 
turns out I was a semifinalist. Yeah. So. Kev Kevin Britton, the athletics media relations uh, leader inside the athletics department. Uh, there are 156 semifinalists, 36 among the 122 teams in the football championship subdivision. So it focuses on the scholar part of being an athlete. You're an occupational safety major. Tell me about uh, that major and what you want to do in the future. All right. Uh, occupational safety is just, uh, you know, there's a lot of different things you can do with that, whether it be work specifically with OSHA or work in a, in a industry setting as a full-time safety uh, professional for a company. Uh, in the future, I'd really like to do some type of loss control consulting, um, but that's a little bit further on down the road. Right now, it's just trying to get a job after college. When you, and you're going to graduate in May, there's so much time management for, for an, a student athlete. How has football commingling with your academics helped you become a, both a better student and a better athlete? Well, that's one thing they, they try to they try to teach you in high school that, you know, time management is is key in college. And it's really, you know, it really hits you hard whenever you get here and then you got 20 hours of practice a week plus, you know, a 15 hour schedule. And it was just something that, you know, I learned to deal with getting the study hall hours and people in the in the Bratsky Center that really really set you up for success. Mm -hmm. Do you do you have one moment that you'll remember most through your career? And I know we still have the rest of your senior year to go, but does something stick in your mind that as you leave this campus, you'll take with you? Uh, really, the, the family and uh, com camaraderie uh, with the football team, uh, you know, got to know these guys over the past five years of my life. Uh, they've been through the ups and downs with me, and it's really something I cherish. Yeah, what did your, what did your, family say when when you told them you were a semi-finalist for this prestigious award really really proud of me um you know academics is always something that's been that's been pushed in in my household growing up and uh you know it's, it's nice to see that pay off and nice nice to see that you know you there's recognitions for for that yeah and how do you want colonel fans to remember number 97 on the football field uh hopefully a, a guy that you know was able to do his job and let things run smoothly. It kind of reminds me of loss prevention, behind the scenes guy. You're you're one of those guys that doesn't get all the sacks. You're down there setting things up for other players a lot of the times. Right, yeah. Um, really just, like I said, trying to make things run smooth, let the linebackers get a you know, free pass yeah. and do what I have to. All right, Avery, congratulations. Thank you. All right, Avery Pitt, again, a semifinalist for the William V. Campbell Trophy. And up next for Avery and the rest of the Colonels, the Skyhawks of UT Martin. Kickoff is Saturday at 3. You can catch our live broadcast on WCYO 100.7 FM and online across the internet at ekusports.com. We invite you to keep up with EKU Sports all season long on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And thanks for joining us on another edition of Inside EKU Sports. We'll see you again next week. Inside EKU Sports, brought to you by Jimmy John's. Order Jimmy John's sandwich delivery today. Jimmy John's Freaky Fast. Freaky Fresh.